Hi, I am Sarvesh. And in this video, we would see about regulatories and financial intermediaries. Before going to stock market, it's good to know about these regulators so that it would be good, better to understand. We see market participants. First one is retail investors like you, me, or anyone, any common people. Next is NRIs or OCIs. They are non resident Indians who are situated somewhere abroad. Next comes domestic institutions. This can be some companies like LIC who invest in huge amounts in stock market. Next is domestic asset management companies. These are also similar companies like some mutual funds where you are putting your money, they invest for you in stock market. Next is foreign institutional investors. They are some companies which is from some foreign companies which invest in Indian stock market. And if you see actually retail participants invest total amount of around only 21% of the total amount, then other 80% is comprised of other four categories, especially this FIAs and domestic institutions that is called as DAS, they are made, play the major part in stock market. Next, we'll come to SEBI. Like the, see, there are so many market participants and someone has to regulate everyone. And that is for India, it is called as SEBI and they, are, they regulate the stock market. And if you see the role of SEBI, first, they have to check whether exchange is functioning properly. Exchanges where companies list their shares and that could be traded and stock brokers and they should also function properly. They can't do some cheating and get money from normal investors, retail investors. Next, participants should not even in unfair practices. Like if you see there is something called as insider trading where you could get to the, know the information of some results or earnings of the company before it's publicly announced. So you will get the details before and you could you could use that information to trade. But that is called as insider trading. And actually this actually happens and it can't be controlled 100%. But still that is some roles of SEBI. Next, there are some big scams too can happen. Like there was someone a big scam called Satyam Computers. It was a big company back at 2000. Eight nine, and what they have, they have uh, submitted some fake reports and accounting was completely cheated, and they have literally scammed around seven thousand crores. And SEBI has to make sure that something like that does not happen again. And now it's strict, and now it's somewhat good in the stock market and its rules and regulations. And small investors should be protected. Yeah. And large investors should not manipulate the market. Yeah, for this, if you see example, I hope you would have seen that scam 1992 movie. Ah, sorry. A web series that where you could Arshad Mehta would buy a company and he would manipulate the prices to from around 30 to around 300. It's like it's not actually companies values so much, but since he has so much influence in people and he has so much capital with him, he could easily manipulate the market and make that price to go so higher. And also SEBI has to make sure it functions properly and market develops in the long run. Now let's come to some financial intermediaries. The stock broker is someone who connects you to exchange. You cannot directly buy the shares of companies from exchange. But stock broker gets the shares with, and you could buy the shares from the stock broker and sell whenever you want. And stock broker provides you with a trading account where you could access to all market instruments. Next, if you come, it's depository. That now first initially the, all the shares was like a paper documents. If you want to buy a share, there will be a paper document listing you that you own that shares. But later, in uh, this was changed and everything became electronic, electronic, like every shares is digital. And since everything is dematerialized, 
that is called as dmat dematerialized is called as dmat and the storage place is called as dmat account where whatever shares you buy would go and be stored in a dmat account electronically digital shares and depository some intermediary who provides you with a dmat account and in india we have two depositories they are nsdl and cdsl now let to trade in markets you should definitely have a bank account a trading account and a dmat account it's not difficult to have a, a trading account like if you have a bank account you could just go to some trading broker and open an account according to their requirements quite simpler process you should have an aadhar card and pan card and a bank account and while you are opening a trading account with broker you can not, that will automatically get you a dmat account so you don't need to separately open somewhere else a dmat account and that's it for this video see you all in the next video